Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to our prosthodontic series. This video will talk about metal ceramic and all ceramic crowns. So the first type of crown we're going to talk about is the metal ceramic crown, also referred to as a PFM, or porcelain fused to metal crown. And there's actually a very specific bonding process that occurs to fuse the porcelain to the metal and it's via this monomolecular oxide layer, or oxidative layer. And the oxide layer is a thin gray or black film, which is critical for the bonding between porcelain and metal. But it also presents an aesthetic challenge because of its dark color, and we'll talk about how to overcome that in the next slide. So let's unpack the layers of a metal ceramic or PFM crown. So we've talked about metal alloys and the metal is represented as the black layer in the diagram. Notice on the lingual of this anterior tooth, the metal is the only material present. And this works because it allows us to conserve more tooth structure and not have to reduce as much, as much tooth structure on that surface. And we won't see this when the patient smiles anyway, so it doesn't compromise the aesthetics of the crown. Now let's look at the porcelain layers. So the first layer is the opaque porcelain, and it masks the dark oxide color, provides the porcelain metal bond, and masking must be accomplished with a minimum thickness of at least 0.1 millimeters. So opaque means that you cannot see through it. And the idea is that this very thin layer of opaque porcelain blocks the dark metal and the gray-black oxide layer we talked about before. So it's represented as this very thin yellow line in the diagram. The next layer as we're building the crown out is the body or dentin porcelain. And this contains most of the shade of the crown and builds up the majority of it. And it's represented as the red and the orange layers in this diagram. The last layer is the incisal or enamel porcelain. It's represented as the light blue layer in the diagram, and it's also the most translucent layer. So it gives the tooth a more natural appearance. If this were a posterior crown, instead of incisal, we would call it occlusal porcelain. So some other important things to note, notice how there's a shoulder margin on the buckle and a chamfer margin on the lingual. And notice how all the internal line angles are rounded. That's a very important tooth preparation principle that we talked about. And one more thing is that occlusal contacts on a PFM crown must be at least 1.5 millimeters away from the porcelain metal junction. So in this diagram where the metal meets the porcelain is right here. So the occlusal contact on this crown should be either 1.5 millimeters away onto the metal or 1.5 millimeters away onto the porcelain. So it should be far enough away from this junction point. So the metal ceramic uh, crown can fail for a number of reasons. Adhesive failures means that there's a failure between the two different materials, between the porcelain and metal. And it could be if the oxide was not formed, it could be between the oxide layer and the metal if the metal is contaminated, between the porcelain and the oxide layer if the porcelain is, not, is contaminated. Cohesive failures means that there is a failure among the same material or within the same material. So if there's a failure between porcelain and porcelain molecules, it could be due to inclusions or voids when that material was made between the within the actual oxide layer if the oxide layer is too thick. Remember, it has to be a monomolecular oxide layer, which means that it's just one molecule thick. And metal to metal failures never happen. I'm sure they do in some cases, but this, in other words, very, very rarely is this the cause of a cohesive failure. Long-spanning 
PFM bridges are subject to fracture under flexing due to porcelain's low ductility. Now we talked about ductility in our mechanical properties video. In other words, porcelain, as we know, is very brittle. And so like we talked about, it fractures easily without substantial dimensional changes. So it's not great with flexural strength. All right, so let's talk about all ceramic crowns now. And they're basically two types of all ceramic crowns. We know that all ceramic crowns are used primarily for their aesthetic principles. And the two types of all ceramic crowns are either the ceramics that contain silica or glass and ceramics without glass. So you can etch glass ceramics with a different type of etch, and it's called hydrofluoric acid. This is different from the phosphoric acid that we use on teeth. And we can also treat the, this kind of ceramic with a silane coupling agent. So silane coupling agent means that it enhances bonding to the surface. So it makes whatever cement that we're going to be using even more effective, and then we can bond it to the tooth. So these are, the cement, these are the ceramics that we tend to use towards the anterior region. The non-glass ceramics cannot be etched because they don't contain that silica or that glass. So they cannot be successfully bonded, but they are looted or sealed to the tooth with cement. Typically, these ceramics can be a little bit on the stronger side, but maybe not as aesthetic as the glass containing ceramics are. So here we have a diagram of an all ceramic crown prep and the layers that go along with the all ceramic crown. Notice the shoulder margin on both the facial and lingual surfaces to support the ceramic. So from inside to outside, we have the base porcelain layer, we have the dentin porcelain layer, and then we have the enamel porcelain layer. We can compare this Next to the PFM crown prep we just talked about, notice a shoulder margin on the facial and a heavy chamfer margin on the lingual where the metal is. So from inside to outside here, we have in gray the metal, the cast metal core. We have the opaque porcelain, that very thin layer, uh, about 0.1 millimeters, the dentin porcelain, and the enamel porcelain. Okay, so what about veneers? So we talked about full coverage crowns, we talked about inlays, onlays, partial crowns, but veneers are different still. And they cover only the facial surface of a tooth, and they're used to improve appearance. They're purely aesthetic in function. So for porcelain veneers, we do have to know these numbers, particularly the first two for the board exam. I've seen these come up on questions quite often. So for a gingival, for the gingival third reduction, that means how much tooth structure we're taking away in the gingival third portion of the tooth preparation, we're at 0.3 millimeters. So very, very little. It's a very conservative prep design. And then as we move up in the mid facial region, we have about half a millimeter, 0.5 millimeters of facial reduction. Then at the incisal portion, this could, this could range anywhere from one to two millimeters generally. But the 0.3 and 0.5, for whatever reason, come up a lot. So definitely commit those to memory. And another important distinction for veneers is that the preparation design must be all within the enamel layer for the best, most predictable bonding. Remember when we're bonding to dentin, it's not quite as predictable as it is to uh, acid etched enamel. So as I mentioned, it should be a very conservative prep design. We're not going into the dentin layer like we are for full crowns and partial crowns. So the principle it does share with crowns is that all the internal line angles must be rounded, but the difference is that it should be intra an intra enamel preparation. So the preparation goes only into the enamel layer and not any thicker than that. And lastly, I want to talk about the Maryland Bridge. And it's also called a resin bonded bridge. 
and it's made of porcelain or porcelain fused to metal, and it has little metal or porcelain wings on one or both sides of it that uh, bond to the natural teeth. So here you see a porcelain crown with some metal wings extending from the pontic bonded to tooth number 9 and 11. So when comparing this treatment option to a conventional bridge, there's one very important con to consider for each treatment option. It also makes for a really common boards question. So the conventional bridge requires more removal of tooth structure. We're doing conventional crown preps for both of the abutment teeth, like we talked about before. The resin bonded bridge or Maryland bridge doesn't involve that much tooth reduction. It's very, very minimal conservative prep, but since we're bonding with resin and we're not having the whole retention that's offered by a crown prep, it can experience debonding. So it may require it to be uh, re-cemented on, uh, on occasion. It's not quite as steady as a conventional bridge would be, but you don't have to remove as much tooth structure. So there are pros and cons to each method. All right, so that's it for this video on PFM and all ceramic crown types. If you're interested in supporting me, please check out my Patreon page. A huge thank you to Michael Raja and all of my patrons for their continued support. You can unlock extras like access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions. So go check that out. The link will be in the description. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video.